Just a moment for the Present. Just a moment for the Mrs. Freeman? Here. Mr. Lawler? Present. Mr. Newman? Present. It is always a, it is always an honor for me to be here to be with the leaders of our city and I do believe we have some very good leaders my point is our leaders should fight for our rights don't go along to get along Fight for your jobs. Everybody in this building at this time cares about the city and the citizens of this, of this, cares about the city's citizens of Flint. I am happy to say that I live in Flint, but there are some things that's going on here that I find atrocious. I find outrageous. I find that we need to speak up for our rights. And I am going to tell you right now how I feel about this new program. It's Mr. Eason. And he's not a personal friend of mine, but he is a very smart man. He makes things happen. And I know that because I can lay my hands on the things that he's been involved in. So I want Mr. Eason back on the job. And these carpetbaggers, I'm firing them right now. They're all fired. We do not need a babysitter for Chief Alvern Lott. That money that they're paying him could go for two policemen, or one policeman and one fireman. $170,000, that would give us three policemen, or two policemen and one fireman. We do not need nannies. We do not need babysitters. It's an honor for me to know my own people. I don't want to look at nobody from out of town. I want to see my people with the jobs. And. That should be your main priority, checks and balances. 
should be the utmost in whatever you do for the city of Flint. Checks and balances. I'm asking you to fire these people. I do not want any Republicans coming into Genesee County running our city and making the money. I want my people that lives here in the city of Flint to make the money. They're smart enough. Every city in the United States is in a deficit. But are you at Charlevoix, Mackinac Island? Are you at Travis Bay? Go north and see what they're doing and try to take over there. They have lots of money. But leave Flint alone. I'm very happy to be a citizen of Flint. The fine arts, the Flint Institute of Music, the Flint Institute of Arts, Sloan Museum. We are a great city. We've been a great city. We can be a great city again, but we need to send the carpetbaggers along the way. They're not gonna spend any money in Flint. They fill up their tanks wherever they live. They eat at restaurants somewhere else. I'm asking you to fire all of those people that do not live in the city of Flint and let our people have the jobs. And I thank you very much. Thank you, Carolyn. <clears throat> our next speaker this evening. Beth Radcliffe. Good evening. Good evening. I thought that perhaps we would have a little knowledge from you guys as to what was going on first. So I guess mine would be in the form of questions. And probably the first question I would have is the legality of anything that was put forth by Mr. Brown, if we could get an answer to that. Um, the fact of our water bill is being more than like my utility bill is. Uh, what is going to happen to the council with the rezoning? Is that going to be less council members? Uh, the voting things, and I think probably the low turnout was, I did not find, I usually do call, but I did not call, and I did not have knowledge of this meeting until yesterday evening news. So I think perhaps that's a low turnout. On the voter precinct changes, we didn't, I don't know how anybody else came, but we did not get notice until the 6th of August, which only gave you one day preparation. And I, it would seem like they would have, in order to set up these precincts, would have had a further out where people could manage to make the arrangements to go where they needed to go. Uh, I guess basically I'm really interested in see what our council's thoughts are, uh, the, the legalities, who's, is this Mr. Brown getting full wages for him being here illegally and unconstitutionally as his staff, and what changes will be made now or what programs are you going to be working on? And that would be all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And we will answer your questions at the end of our meeting, okay? Thank you. Our next speaker this evening? Pastor Latrell Holmes. On such a day as our city has shown the world that good does indeed come out of Flint, Michigan, as we saw our dear daughter, Clarissa Shields, win the gold medal right. this day for us. Certainly why that is the high point of the day, it is a, a dark hour for our city because I believe that this council, and I certainly implore you tonight uh, to look into the injustices that was put upon our city on the decisions that was made on last evening. I believe each and every one of those decisions was a violation 
I believe each and every one of those decisions was akin to thievery from the residents of this city. I believe as this issue is researched, uh, particularly as it relates to two um, EM orders that I will mention in a moment, uh, we will find that it was not only illegal, but is immoral, <laughs> unethical, and definitely insensitive to the citizens of the city of Flint. Public Act 4, on July 25th, as many of you know, I and many of the residents of the city took buses along with the residents of Ben Harbor, Ann Arbor, Detroit, Muskegon, Travis City, and we went down to the doorsteps of our Michigan Supreme Court to preferably advocate for the decision that the Board of Canvassers were ordered to do on yesterday. And that was to place in representation of the 200 and over 200,000 signatures of the Michigan residents, PA4 on the ballot in November. It is our understanding, my understanding, and I believe the citizens of the city's understanding that at the time that that decision was made by that group, which was a unanimous decision, that all of the decisions of PA4 would be stalled. PA4, on the last page of the 27 pages of its act, has on it that Public Act 72 of 1990 was repealed, which means PA4 superseded PA72, which means that it is no longer inactive, which means that all of the decision that relate to an emergency financial manager is on hold until November when the voters express themselves. Therefore, all of the decisions, even the appointment of Mr. Kurtz back to his position, I believe that this council should investigate through appropriate legal means, the legal appropriateness of that, and find that all of the decisions of August 8th should be viewed as illegal and should be appropriately returned in any fiduciary manner to the citizens of the city of Flint. I am particularly concerned and should be the residents about the emergency manager orders that pass on for the sum, I understand, of $1, 120 East 1st Street, the building known as Genesee Towers, to the Uptown Reinvestment Corporation. The order which I first read is order 2112 EM 489, which said that they will, URC will obtain the necessary finances to, to do whatever was necessary to relieve the city of the liability. Uh, it is my understanding that the liability has been passed on through an assessment to the residents of the city of Flint who begin to pay that assessment on this particular tax road. And so if it's URC's responsibility under the executive emergency manager's order to relieve the city of liability, I also ask that this council look forward to some rebate and reimbursements to the cities for these related liabilities. And then as this entire thing is, is, was done in such a vengeful manner, it shows in the next executive order some contrary language because it now says that URC does not have to pay any money, but that the city would contribute the sum of $750,000 to demolish the building that they sold to URC under the prior order for $1. 750,000 grant dollars. Look, Pastor Holmes, can you, can you hold this one minute? I think we should give additional um, two minutes. Pastor Holmes, we'll give you an additional three minutes, and then could you sum up, please? Thank you. I will do that. Thank you for that additional time. Uh, as to provide further clarity again, uh, the orders are very much contradictory, which speaks to the, uh, I can't use a quote, our six ward council person's word, but I believe it's cushionary or something like that. Uh, we called it on 630 East McClellan Street, where I grew up just flat out 
mess uh, there. But it is not right uh, that for the city to obligate $750,000 of demolition money to create a park in downtown Flint when the extreme north sides of this city has extreme blight that needs to be addressed with dollars that are continually being sent back to the federal government. So uh, my dear elected officials, I implore you tonight uh, to please get appropriate legal, uh, legal means to investigate these acts which are blatantly wrong, egregiously wrong, and are unfair to the residents of the city of Flint. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Pastor Holmes. Mr. President. <clears throat> Councilwoman Poplar. Yes, Mr. President, I would like a referral sent to whoever is in charge of demolition and ask them how can they spend, where did they come up with $750,000 to demo this building downtown, whatever they're calling it, Genesee Towers, and, and we can't find demolition money to get these houses that's been cut and plugged six months ago. So where did they come up with the money? Because I have been asking and asking and nobody is giving me an answer about when a house is coming down on Fleming Road, Stewart Street, or nowhere on the north side. There's no grass being cut and there's no houses coming down and you're going to tell me that they're going to spend $750,000 to take down Genesee Towers? Oh no. Well, we got a word for that. Councilwoman Poplar, I'll, I'll, I'll make that referral. I would appreciate it, Mr. President, because it is some trickery going on here and a whole bunch of lies, blatant lies. But understand the emergency manager eliminated the demolition department. So I'm not sure. But where did he get the money from? Where did he move? Something's illegal here. That's what I want to know. Where did he get the money from? to even contemplate on taking down Genesee Towers. That's, that's my question we'll to that him or whoever's in charge of this, whatever they're doing. Jackie, I'll get that answer Thank for you. Thank you. I'm, I appreciate it. C Councilman You know, it's, it's my understanding that this is community block grant dollars. And you know, what, what, really, what really ticks me off about the whole situation is um, we just had a, um, um, a report from the Inspector General where the demolition department, out of the report, of the money that we have to pay back, the demolition department was the one department in the city of Flint that they, they thought that people from around the country should come in and look at because they were doing such a good job with it. But what kills me about this is this money could be used over on the north end, over on the east side, on the west side, and throughout the city to take down some of these homes that are blighted. And we're going to take community block grant dollars, $750,000, and put it into the Genesee Towers, a place that we just sold them, sold it to them for a dollar? That does not make any sense. And I really do want to get some answers from this. This does not make any sense whatsoever, especially when we had a program where we were actually taking down houses and they were doing a remarkable job. And then he decided to eliminate the entire demolition department, and they are are recognized throughout the country for the work that they were doing with community black grant dollars. That was the one thing that we had dealing with community black grant dollars that we actually did right in the city of Flint. So I just can't understand that. So I do, I really want to get some answers to this and find out what's going on and why, why would we give them $750,000 when we have all these other houses, like Jackie just said, that need to be cut and plugged. Councilman Lawler has a lot in the fifth ward. I have a lot in the third ward. Josh has a lot in the, in the, in the fourth. I mean, all of us have houses that we can take down. And that $750,000 could take down at least three or four in each one of our wards. You know, so I really would like to get some answers on this. So Thank I'm going to be asking this question on Monday. Mr. Thank President. You. I'd like to uh, make a referral to the legal department and ask them if they would look into being made after the decision of the canvassing board. Uh, he signed these. That doesn't sound legal to me. I'll recognize that referral in order, Councilman Lawler. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. David Devonport. <clears throat> Good evening, Council. 
Good evening. It's a long time no see. And um, I, I'd like to say the reason it has been a long time no see is because I want you all to understand what you, what's going on right now. You're being hijacked. You're being hijacked. They're taking it from you. But they're, they're using your minds and letting you think about the little things that they're doing instead of the, biggest, the bigger picture of the matter. The bigger picture of the matter goes farther than what they're doing right now. What I'm saying is, is that the state, the only way Public Act 4 and Public Act 72 can be changed that will clearly affect it is through the state. You have state reps, you have Stanley, you have Ananich, as Democrats. There's clearly, there's no reason why a Republican governor should have sent his people into a Democratic city. It was, it, it was crazy. So clearly, what I'm saying is, is that even though it's only two of them and they can't do nothing, you're right. Because the governor would veto it and send it right back down to them. So you gotta go to higher. You gotta you, you got protect the future. You gotta go up to federal level. You gotta go there. I don't know how you plan on doing it. My goal was to get up there as soon as possible and try to correct some of the wrong. That's my main goal. I'm trying to get you to understand right now that I admire what you're doing by taking it to the courts. Yep, do what you can. Save what you can. But in the end, it's going to come out that the state law hasn't been violated and they're going to do what they want to do. This is why they took Mr. Brown down and put him right at city administrator because the law said he couldn't be in that seat. But it did not say he could be, not be the city administrator. So really, he's still running this city. Nothing has changed. But we got to wake up. We got to wake up. We can't let them keep playing with our minds with the little stuff. That building, that, I, I mean, I'm not saying it's little in, in value, but that's what they're using to keep you occupied while they do something else in behind the scenes. You got to wake up, people. If you don't wake up, it'll be too late. So I'm asking you, if you really care, you need to get somebody up in that Congress seat that's going to get up here and go to work. Not get up there and do what status quo. Or get up there just because I decided I didn't like what Obama said. Or get up there and, well, just because my uncle there, I should get the next seat. We're playing with people, they're playing with people's lives. And yours is included, whether you know, understand it or not. You're still living in this city. So I just dropped by today to tell you that that's the reason why you haven't been seeing me. My grandma always told me, she said, learn to pick your battles. That's what she said. And that was one battle that when the state ruled, there was nothing we could do. Nothing we could do. They even tried to to uh, sideswipe us with the, uh, couldn't put it on the ballot because of the font size. But that was one place that they overruled it. So I'm asking you, I'm asking for your support in November. At least you'll know you have somebody up there that's gonna fight for you, that's gonna take care of your best interests and the citizens in this city. God bless you all, and you all keep me in prayer as I make this fight, this road. Thank you. Thank you, David. <clears throat> Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Nayara Sharif. Good evening. I am Nayara Sharif, and I remember way back when, which was November 14, 2011, myself and other folks from Stand Up for Democracy gave speech after an passing speech to attempt to get the city council to fight for the citizens to um, ask for a hearing to dispute the decision for Public Act 4 for us to get an emergency manager. And I remember that only Shelton Neely and Mike Sargentson stood up for the residents. And I would say today, I'm kind of happy that y'all act like y'all got some sense. Like, kind of like from the, you know, because now that, we're, that they're trying to give us another emergency financial manager under 
PA72, I am so proud that y'all finally seen the light. Um, but the fight's not over because emergency manager Mike Brown tried to go out with a bang with these uh, 62 um, orders and one of no um, Pastor Holmes did discuss. But the other thing that I would, that kind of like drew my interest was um, number 35, um, 2012 EM 503, authorized an agreement with the Food Bank of Eastern Michigan. And I so desperately hope that that's not uh, de-parking Brennan Park for a parking lot for the food bank because I think it's quite unseemly and outrageous that it's okay for in, the, in, in a poor neighborhood that public assets and public beautification could be sacrificed for a parking lot, but in other areas they're trying to create parks and kind of sticking it to the city. So we get stuck all kind of ways. We get stuck far as less access to resources and, um, and things that will psychologically better our community and being outdoors versus um, sticking it to us financially with us being foot that bill, that $750,000 for that demolition. So, um, and then also I want to say that we still in this fight because I know that there's gonna be more litigation of like whether PA 72 is gonna, but regardless of what that is, we need to get out and vote to overturn PA 4 and keep our eye on the prize and still um, hold Lansing to the fire because they trying to do kind of a, a PA 4 part two. So they can't get it one way, they are gonna try to get another way. So we really need to like get kind of like in that fight and get active and have our voices overpower what's happening in Lansing. And if those folks ain't doing what we want them to do, they're gonna have to move on out the way. Just like if y'all, with this part two, y'all got a second chance. If y'all don't do what we want y'all to do, which is to fight for the citizens of the city, y'all gonna have to move out the way either later on this year or next year when y'all up for re-election. So, um, I just want to close out and just say, like, we watching. Y'all got a second chance, and we watching y'all. All right, thanks. Thank you. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Nathaniel Braswell. Well, 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 protocol's already been established, and uh, I really don't even know where to start. Uh, I've been a resident of Flint for since 1958. My kids was reared here. I uh, worked here and retired here. And I've never seen so much uh, miscarriage of justice here in the city of Flint. Mm -hmm. You start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. One nation under God. Lord have mercy. And you won't even pray. You know. And Mike Brown and this uh, other character, uh, where are they? I mean, do they show any, they need to be here to hear our concern. They don't need to get it second hand. And the city council, and, and I'm glad that you are doing what you're doing, but you need to do more. You need to show more passion for your job. Like the sister just said, if you don't do what we ask you to do, I do know how to vote. And I do know how to encourage other people to get them out to vote so we can be represented down here. Fight! I mean, we got people, Republicans coming in here and dictating to us what we should be doing in our city. Now they come around, I look around here and I look at all these things Mike Brown did before he left. Come on now. Show some love for the job that you have. I'm, this is my first time coming down. I am highly upset and I have just begun to fight. You know, we seem small here now, but we, this, this, this place should be overflow with our citizens. But we did this at the last minute. Give us a two weeks notice so we can round up the people to come down through here. I, I just happen to be listening to the radio. We want to do everything so secretive and announce it ahead of time so people can come out and be prepared. 
I happened to come down here today just to show my emotion and just show how concerned I am for the city. You know, I am retired. Um, the coming tonight, you treat me like I got a 40 hour job, I pay taxes on everything. Now I am retired, I'm paying state tax, city tax, Flint tax, federal tax. Now you're charging the water, then you're charging me for lights. I'm doing better than most folks. Everybody don't have the money. We don't have it. You trying to get something out of nothing. And we sit down here, twilling our fingers, meeting down here. I'm tired of the city council. I really am. I really am. I, I'm saying I'm not being disrespectful. I'm tired of the governor that we have here. I'm tired of all the things that have been represented here. Just force feeding us down our throat. Now you're going to spend all this money down here at, at downtown Flint and the north side of Flint is going to pots. It's incredibly stupid and crazy. So I'm not even going to use my whole five minutes because I might just get completely out of hand. But I expect all of you to do what you've been called and, and elected to do. We have a municipality form of government. We elected you. We ain't elected no financial manager. You talking about a pledge of allegiance? What happened? We, we, we out here, we're like a third world country. Hmm. We vote. Then you come around and going to disenfranchise me? I'm not stupid. Y'all look at me like as you want to. I will be back, and you need to be held accountable. Show some concern. Show some fight for your people here. This is, all, this is what we have here. You was elected. We have a municipality form of government. Can't have nobody coming to town and tell us how to run our city. All they need to do is run their shoes up, run their mouth, and y'all need to do better. Thank you. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Eric Mays. Yeah. Um, I was glad when I heard it was a 5.30 meeting. And I listened to the contents of it. I haven't really looked at the special meeting, but the news told me it's because Scott Kincaid wants to see if the other council people will vote unanimously, eight to one, seven to two, to see if they're willing to fight as it relates to taking back some type of control. And you know if you do that, you've got to do a better job. Started with the Pledge of Allegiance this 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 evening, and when it, we were saying it, I was thinking about in Blackstones earlier downtown, watching Clarissa Shields win that. I watched all three of them, so I said, "The Pledge of Allegiance, USA." She won a gold medal, a Flintstone athletic community. 17, we can be proud. Come out of Burston. BB loves Burston. I say they should answer people's questions and talk to the people when they speak. They shouldn't wait to the end of the meeting. They should really dialogue. I say, Peter Bay, he always leaves. He's the lawyer, he's in the way, you gotta get rid of him. He's the legal question person who's been wrong. He's been wrong in finance through advice and economic development. He's been wrong even doing the financial emergency manager legal questions. He's gonna come back and tell you wrong. We are the legal community, it's many of us you got Judge Crawford in here now. You got lawyers who you can meet with at Antioch for free to answer these legal questions. We in a legal dog fight for democracy. And it's time to provide leadership by y'all. You don't have to wonder and send referrals. You're back to the charter. You call an investigative hearing and you put Mike Brown and everybody else under oath and you do it in front of us. We can see and hear the answers to the question. You put Peter Bade under oath in front of us. You put Peter Bade under oath in front of Judge Crawford and Marable and Attorney Cotton and everybody in the legal community on this. You got to provide leadership legally as we fight this fight. Then politically, 
I want the counsel and Ms. Brown to know that the Attorney General's office cleared me. I don't solicit absentee ballot applications. I got carried out of here by the police saying we should overcome. Barack Obama and the Democratic Party is fixing to come to town. They gonna take a position, the Democrats will take a position, the Republicans will take a position as it relates to yes or no on the ballot, as it relates to Public Act 4. My wife have been off for over five months. Living like this for Flintstones is so easy that a caveman can do it. <laughs> the Geico commercial rings home. It's easy while you get your checks and you travel to and fro and you gas up and we struggle to these meetings. I say to you, William White out in the public from the Mott Foundation. See, you got a triangle. You got the uptown development. You got Mr. White, and you got the governor as well as Mike Brown. Eric, I'm going to ask you to ask me to sum up. I don't. No, no, I'm going to give you three minutes and then well, ask God you to sum up. God bless you. God bless you for the democracy. I got arrested for going over three minutes doing this mess, carry it out for what I stand for. Let's go to work and let's get the job done. We will win big and we will shine. We will shine as a beacon, as a city, across the nation, because I guarantee you, while we fix this policy, you put this supplemental income on my back. Leave it to me, leave it to Howard Croft, leave it to Del Rico, leave it to Pastor Latrell Holmes, and you support Pastor Randolph and Flynn when you see us moving. We gonna show you something, we're gonna be a model if God is in this, for the nation, God bless. Thank you, Eric. <clears throat> Our next speaker this evening, Madam Clerk. Barbara Griffiths Wilson. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening, Barbara. City Council. First, I want to commend the City Council for holding this meeting. And I would like to encourage you to stay focused on the business at hand. But I really want to speak to the community and inform them that Deputy Treasurer Roger Frazier, Mott Foundation's Bill White and Ridgeway White, Regional, Direct, Regional Chamber of Commerce Tim Herman, Bob Emerson, Dwayne Miller, who works for the Chamber and for Mike Brown, and the Governor are the ones who sat through a closed door session and decided who the EFM would be. Also, the same ones who are depriving taxpayers of their democracy are not people who reside in the city of Flint. 
Some of them don't even reside in the county. They chose behind the scenes to pick Mike Brown as city, administration, city administrator for $175,000. Well, the mayor don't make $175,000. And the last administrator, who everybody was beating up, didn't make $175,000. But we're broke. They kept in place all of his appointees at the same rate of pay that they were receiving when he was the EFM. And all of the decisions that he made stayed. When he was in, stayed when he was EFM. Mr. Brown has already given away the towers, the Genesee Towers, that taxpayers paid for. Hmm. Mr. Brown wants the taxpayers to pay for extra police downtown, and he's also extended the Renaissance Center, which means that the people downtown don't have to pay no taxes, because <laughs> he's already made up in his mind that we're going to pay him. Uh, we can't get grass cut or parks kept, although we still pay millage for a park, for maintenance. And what he has done is he has gone behind you guys back, and he has decided that Brennan Park, part of Brennan Park should be given away, even though the DNR has sent me letter after letter and said that that's not true. There's a lot of things that have to happen. But he's been working to give them away. What I want to know from the community is, how long are we going to allow these so-called leaders to call the shots in Flint? How much longer will we sit around apathetic? And when will we stand up, step up, and speak up? This is taxation without representation. That's right. That's right. This is what the carpetbaggers did. And history does repeat itself. What I would like for everybody in this city to do is encourage your pastor and the city council and others to come together with Ridgeway White, come together with Bill White, Tim Herman, and the rest of the Motley crew and ask them, what makes you think you have the right to tell the citizens of Flint how they're going to live in their own city and you don't even pay taxes here? Thank you, Barbara. Our next speaker this evening, Madam Clerk. William Ganey. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Uh, William Ganey. Uh, seems like I'm always here talking about preservation. Um, I'm concerned about item number 20, emergency manager's agenda number 20. It's 2012 EM 488, Memorandum of Understanding between Genesee, Genesee County Land Bank Authority and the City of Flint. And basically what it says is that the structures will be selected solely by the land bank and may be located anywhere within the boundaries of the city NSP2 boundaries. Um, of course, I'm not an attorney, but it sure sounds like when you say solely their decision um, that they can tear down houses in the historic districts. Uh, I know there's a lot that they're biting at the bit to tear down. It sure seems like they're circumventing um, checks and balances with the Historic District Commission. Um, maybe that's just an oversight. Maybe I'm reading a little bit too much into it, but it sure would be nice to maybe have another memorandum of understanding, like update number four, to say uh, within the excluding the historic districts, give them a little layer of protection. Uh, the other thing is, is that uh, he's removed two historic district commissioners, Ryan Ishu and Leanne Barkas. I know Leanne served for, I think, 11 years. Um, they go by the guidelines by the federal government. It's called the Secretary of Interior Standards. A lot of people think that uh, these commissioners just make their decisions on their own, but they don't. They use these guidelines. And both of these commissioners have served very well the city of Flint, the historic districts. And uh, it's just a little troubling that they are removed and replaced by two other people. Um, I know Dick Ramsdell a little bit. I don't know what his background in historic preservation is, but it's pretty hard to beat uh, Liam Barkas and Ryan Ishu as far as uh, ability and background. So I don't know what we can do, but uh, 
I just wanted you to be aware of what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker this evening, Madam Clerk. Mr. Chris Del Moroni. Thank you. My name is Chris Del Moroni and I live in Flint, Michigan. Um, this council and the city needs to start paying attention to its citizens. Uh, it's unfortunate that the emergency financial manager thing was not challenged back in November. Because see, I know there's nine council members and I know at least five of you belong to a union, represent people that belong to a union, have belonged to a union before, and only two people voted to put an end to this. And here we are today. I think I want to call it window dressing. But let me tell you about Genesee Towers. Don't kid yourself about the lawsuit and everything else. The lawsuit was only the legal means for others to acquire that property on the backs of the citizens. See, most people will look at that and go, oh, gee, there was a lawsuit and now the city has to pay for it. But see, without that lawsuit, those that want the property would not have gotten it. Because see, Uptown has gotten many properties, downtown Flint, for nothing or for a dollar. I disagree with uh, those two individuals being removed from the Historical Commission and the other individual being put on them. I, I know all three of them, not personally, but I know who they are. Mr. Ramsdale is employed at the farmer's market. And who do you think owns the farmer's market? Who do you think got that from the city of Flint? I believe it was for a dollar years ago. It was Uptown, to my understanding. It's all the same. It's a vicious circle. And I've stood here before and talked to you. You need to look at the players. You need to follow the money. That Rutherford garage, who was that built for? It wasn't built for the residents of the city of Flint. It was Uptown that came here and said, we need a parking deck. Our people want to move into our buildings and they don't know where to park. Their customers, they don't know where to park. Our employees. And you build a deck. And I stood here and I says, don't back those bonds, the bonds that were issued for that deck. And, and Council President and, 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 and Mr. Freeman, you two are really good on finances. And you should tell the city of Flint, the residents of Flint, how many tens, and I think it's hundreds of thousands of dollars, has been sent, spent to back those bonds, money that could be spent for other things. I'm sorry, Smith Village, it's the same way. I stood here when $25 million was coming into our community and I said $25 million will come into this community on the NSP program and at the end of the day we won't know where the money has gone. Most will be spent on administrative stuff. And where has most of that money gone? Smith Village. To build houses in a community that has too many houses already. It makes no sense. General Motors does not continue to build cars when they have a large supply of cars on the dealer lots. They cut back. They shut assembly plants. They lay people off. But what do we do? We build more houses when we already have too many homes in this community. Council, uh, Councilwoman Poplar and, and Nolden, here's your story, media. This is why all these properties are not getting uh, torn down. One of the reasons. Because see, the Genesee County Land Bank is taking their money, taking land bank money, and instead of knocking down homes that they own, they are using some of that money, and knocking down homes into cutting grass, they are using some of that money to cut grass of, of private residences. Okay? So they go into an area, and they cut the grass of properties that they own, and then they also cut the grass of private residents, of, of people 
that own empty lots and they don't charge them money. That's why all the grass isn't getting cut. That's why it's not getting cut more often than two or three times a year. That's your story, media. Check it out. Check it out. And this year, this year, they've been told not to do that. And they're only going to cut land bank properties. Something's wrong. If I might continue. Chris, you can have a couple minutes uh, to continue and then please sum up. Thank you. If you think the towers have cost the residents of the city of Flint a lot of money, watch for that water pipeline. That's not going to be free. I'm telling you, when they put the, that pipe, that, that pipe into the ground, they're going to hire workers. And it's a great jobs program, but we could go out here and dig a hole in the morning, hire people to do that, and then hire people in the afternoon to fill it in. But that really doesn't accomplish much, but spend money. That pipeline is going to cost us money. They talk about raw water and it's cheaper. Why, why do you want to use chlorinated water to, uh, to, uh, for, for irrigation purposes in, in, in farming in that? Well, you know, the last time I checked, I don't think we really have any farms within the city limits of Flint. You cannot take raw water and send it over to a car wash, let's say on Miller Road, to wash cars. You need a separate pipeline, okay? This pipeline coming in is going to be to the benefit of the out county area and to the other counties, more so than the residents of the city of Flint. It might be a good idea for the county, but it's a bad idea for the city of Flint. We should
I am going to bring a group together, and we're going to sue the city for our ordinance. Because this is ridiculous that we don't have this whole thing, this whole 11 months or 9 months or whatever, since December, since they got rid of Brenda, the people have not had anybody. And I come to the city hall, and I said, where do I file this complaint? Well, there is no complaint. Mr. Peter Bay, his comment was, where do other cities file their complaints? <laughs> You know, that's not the answers the citizens should get. We need to file our complaints in the right proper credit. Or we're going to start suing. And I tell you what, I got a group that will start suing. So if anybody knows me, and many of you do, I will do it. And I will be taking your seat next year. Period. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, that concludes our speakers uh, for this evening. And Beth, right after this meeting, I'll, I'll meet with you and answer your questions. I think we'll be able to do some of those uh, when we adopt these uh, resolutions this evening. Um, at this time, uh, we have a, a couple of resolutions uh, to adopt. Um, but prior to having my colleagues uh, read these resolutions. I, I just want to say for the record, um, And it's being worked on uh, in, in a bigger um, area than just one. So um, we're, we are working with them to address that issue. We have Councilman Freeman. Do uh, you have a resolution you would like to, to introduce and please? Do you want me to read it? I, I do, for the record. All right. Uh, I guess it's going to be Anna number one. It's going to be resolution number one. Resolution number one. It's a resolution.
provides for local government to appeal the decision of the Women's Financial Assistance Loan Board under Section 15 and 17 of the Act. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Point City Council shall seek injunctive relief in the an appropriate court, Genesee County Circuit Court, or Indian County Circuit Court, to say that the appointment in all actions of the Emergency Financial Manager under PA 72 until the appeal process is exhausted and resolved. I so move that. Support.
also the Lord of Harvard and also the finance department, as we are still experiencing some difficulties with this oppressive law, we still have to observe our city ordinance and comply with the law. Under our city ordinance, there is a salary cap for all the appointees and ministers that have an opportunity to do a cap for a city administrator. And that cap may well not $170,000, it does not get to that level. But we may have several people in positions that may go over the salary cap pursuant to ordinance. And I'd like to send that to the human resource department to find out if we are in compliance with right. all categories um, of our city ordinances to make sure uh, that we're not paying any taxpayer dollars in absorbing areas such as the city administrator for the $170,000. And Mr. Kincaid, I would like to send that to you. Um, new resources, legal, and finance. I'll recognize that the third on the solar. I have a question for the council next. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. To piggyback on um, the win today for Clarissa Shields, this is a great day for the youth. In Flint, Michigan. This young lady does not realize that now she is what the young people have been looking for a role model. She has shown the least of these, the torn down, the let down, the broken down, the bent down that you don't have to look where you came from and what was done to you. You just keep your eye on the prize. Give yourself a goal, set a goal, and run for it, and you will get the goal. And I pray for every young person this night that you will look and see what God Almighty has made possible. Yes, Lord. This day for our city to rise to one of the highest mountains that He has put here. This young lady is a leader for every young person. Not only in Flint, Michigan, but around the world. And what you can do, you don't have to be a thug. You can be another for the Shields. Just as me. And I, I just, my head is off to her and bless her family, her friends, all of her supporters. And I have given her every prayer I could. And I hope and pray for her safety. I really have anything to say. I, just, I would like to thank uh, Senator Reason for being here tonight. You, myself, uh, and uh, either Dan or Sheldon, and me, for the effort. Okay. Councilman Lloyd. Just a couple things. The first piece is I'd like to uh, sit in and go to the mayor's office. We know that the residents of the city of Flint have been hit really hard. We all have been hit pretty hard with all the water bills uh, by the high water rates. Uh, I do have a concern, and this is a question. I want um, to find out if the appropriate costs have been passed on to the Hall County area. I know that the rates are high for the city of Flint. Yeah. Yeah. No. Thank you, Mrs. Referral. I know that uh, as you go around the city, uh, all of the residents are complaining about the high rates and rightfully so. But I don't hear that cry from the outside county. And I have family members that live out there as well. And I've talked to some of them, and they have not seen those rate increases. And so, two things I want to find out if it's happening and get that in writing. And then, number two, I want to send a request um, that the appropriate rates, if they have in the past, is passed to the outer county residents. Uh, with hopes of e 
to um, this is for the residents, uh, even as uh, various organizations have partnered to get this PA4 uh, uh, piece on the ballot in November, our call fight, and each of those partners did uh, a wonderful job, and we see the results of it today. I want to encourage the residents in the city of Flint um, to not continue to link back in terms of voting, but to prepare themselves not only to go out in November and vote for our president and whoever else is uh, on the ballot, but also to prepare to vote to repeal that particular act. Right. Um, we don't want any of the, the works of any of the individuals that have worked to, to get this to this point. We don't want that work to be done for not. That is the first step of the process, but now we as a community, we as a state, have to draw the strong numbers and vote to make sure that that uh, act is repealed. So I don't want that to get lost. We have to draw the vote, not just for our president and everybody else on the ballot, but it will take the people of the state to repeal that act. So we have to keep drilling that as community leaders to make sure our residents understand that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Waller. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to make a referral to uh, the GC Department uh, Director, Mr. Craw. Uh, Mike Brown and I believe Dave Solis uh, to come to the next council meeting and give us an update on the Smith Village project. I'm getting a lot of complaints about the Smith Village project. Um, people stealing uh, appliances out of the homes. I think it's like seven or ten homes of appliances that were stolen out of the homes. Uh, residents are just living in despair. Current residents are living there. Um, just months and months of despair with uh, you know dirt roads, kids having to play in dirt roads on the sidewalks, and um, you know and the project has just been stalled too long, and these residents deserve better than that. We have the money. Uh, we need to put the politics aside and do what is right for these residents, uh, the prospective residents that have been approved for the homes. They've been living in temporary. Situations for months and have things in storage and have moved into temporary situations where you know it's just it's just a, a travesty for how they have to live and you know um, some of these administrators that are making these decisions they would live in these type of conditions and we shouldn't allow them to uh, to to put this upon these individuals to live like this. So I'd like them to come at that next meeting and I'd like to see. Um, I'd like to see the uh, proposals to complete the contracts, to complete the first phase and the second phase. I've been asking for that for months. I'd like to see the contracts. I've been if all the contracts have not been signed. I want to see the proposed contracts that are not signed. Um, and I'd like to have uh, some anticipated timelines of when this project is going to be completed because we've missed the deadline of August. We're going into the deadline of August 14 of it being completed. Uh, we have bug guidelines, compliance, so we have to uh, abide by it. And if we don't complete it, we're going to be paying millions of dollars back to HUD. Uh, and it's just ridiculous that, um, you know, that we, you know, going down this road again when it's totally unnecessary. Thank you.
ever thought about eating Flint, Michigan. So is this another way of you being able to get land and give it to who you want to give it to? Because I do know, and I attend the meetings at Flint Fireplace City Seeds, they overwatch every lot. They demand to know what you want to do with the lot when you buy it over there. And they have sat diligently watching that lake and that land. And I know a lot of developers, including our ex-mayor, was trying to get that lake over there. So now, is this opening up the door for someone to come in and just take the land and take the lake from those people over there in Flint Park Lake City? I want to know, why would you wipe these people out? I think it's stinky and it's underhanded, and it's just low down and dirty. So you can give that to me. Tell us, put that in this pipe and smoke it. Thank you. You're here.